my job oh, for about 20 years has been cattle, advising on cattle breeding, which has mainly been dairy. But I love to see a nice beef bull. And this one's called competition, where you let the one limousine bull in the field and the Aberdeen Angus is looking and thinking, what the hell is that? This little painting we have here now. Um, I was in Montana last year and went to the horse sales in Billings and it was pouring down with rain and the guy there had his big coat on and he had this plastic flag when he'd hit the horses over the head with it to make them move and it was just the, just the feeling of the rain coming down and all the horses wondering what their fate was. I've just, um, that's been the hardest painting I've done so far. And uh, here we have the knight. My knight in shining armour. Uh, he's. Uh, I went to um, Leeds Museum. Fantastic. Uh, free to go in as well. And they had all these helmets. And I thought, I wonder what it's like. I don't suppose I was supposed to put it on, but I put it on. And the slit is so small. And then if you pretend you're on a horse as well, you can't see where you're going. I couldn't pick up the the jousting stick and I realized their average height was about four foot ten and this just fascinated me and I wanted to just paint this knight and get this feeling of him coming from the sunshine into battle and I wrote a bit of a poem about it knight you sit there battle weary hidden lost and sad holding your weapon that weighs heavy in your hand you cannot see, you cannot feel warm sunshine on your face. Your mount is scared, scarred and defeated. Your life's purpose deceited. It's time to die. Dismount, discard your armour and be. I played with newspaper on this one, just stuck some newspaper and painted over the top of it. And having done the the front three cows and some of the cows are quite ugly as well I didn't want to do pretty cows and then I can see other cows forming within the painting and I wanted to put some in the distance to show that I can actually do know the shape of a cow okay coming down now and I've always had chickens and I love chickens and cockerels and there's nothing like a big cock to wake you up in the morning. And this was that. A bit of the Kellogg's Corn Flakes advert. But it, happens, it just happens so quickly. And the vibrant colours. And this cockerel has got a sense of humour. I'd like to put it where, if I don't like anybody, they could, this cockerel could live next door to them. Uh, the next one is a simple sunflower one. I just wanted a red one. I thought it looked really good on a white. If, if somebody had red and white in there house they could have this as a, a main painting but as you look at it the black comes through and there seems to be African masks coming through on that one and it is a bit more interesting than you first think it's going to be this one on on the floor here was this tree this is a huge tree and you could fit a car through the middle part of it uh, just I wanted to create two, a different type of background to the front and I wanted it to have movement and hopefully achieve that on that. All of this experimental. And then we have the duck. Water off a duck's back. Um, that feeling when a duck gets into the water and it just wants to splash and move and it's putting all the drops all over itself. Um, I think it's a very happy picture. I did this one when a guy came to me for an attunement for Reiki and um, the moon, the face of the moon appeared in the tree because we did it in the wood. And it happened very, very quickly and then in no time at all I could see things within it. The top right hand corner there's a hair sat nest, a leaf here. We've got the face there. We've got badgers coming in and rabbits coming in. But there's just loads and loads. I went to Holland and I saw a fleck feed bull with a tiny head 
but I, I really liked the wool, so I had to just paint him. I came back and painted him. And then there was a cow with this enormous head. And it was funny, and I just thought, what a nice pair they'd make, big head and little head. And then I've, um, on the right-hand side, then I've done a, a typical sort of Fleckby cow in Holland, just uh, looking up, paying attention, watching the birds and bees. And I've tried to do a bit more to shape and form. This painting now of the horses that I did in uh, 1995 was that was painting more of a drawing really that I coloured in was done on the kitchen that I took out from uh, the house in Cumbria so it's done on our old board of the kitchen uh, but I liked it and it reminded me of all the horses that made, meant something to me in my life even though it wasn't sort of to scale or anything and this my stallion Major Jack would represent the first the bay one in the front and the chestnutty one, the orangey one, would be Billy, who died when she was 33. She used to pull a milk cart in the war. And that's how that one's come about. And people said it reminds me of a painting called The Wave. And then they brought out the Guinness advert after that with horses galloping through waves, and it reminded them that, but I had done that before that advert came out. The sheep sort of drew itself, and what it represents when you look at it, there's sort of three sheep within one thing. And when I was breeding sheep, They'd be a lamb for a week and then they'd be a sheep all of a sudden and then there's the growth, the lamb, the middle-sized sheep and a full-sized sheep. I like to put some bronze and some gold in with that and pick up the colours as you walk past it. Uh, I just love breeding sheep. Got a bit of a, a magic roundabout horse here. When I was in France you'd have lots of these merry-go-rounds and see all these horses going on these poles and I just thought oh gosh that is a just a, a bit of a silly drawing but I love the texture of that I love the texture of the mane and I like people to touch it as they walk down the passageway this next one is actually um, in old fashioned language five foot by five foot I don't know what that is in, in Spanish or French or whatever but uh, this is uh, this represents the weeds at the bottom of the garden for me. There's just like one odd flower that's never been watered for 100 years and she still fights to live. So it's where all the little pots are and all the old bits of rubbish are in the corner of your garden. And uh, I just like the colours and I, liked, I like painting it. You, you get up early in the morning to do some lambing and there's just one of those where the sun starts to come up or the sun starts to go down, however you want to see it and it just captures it through those branches and makes the branches turn red too. Just, uh, just that it represents a lot of calm and peace for me. That's a bit of a silly one that I did of a zebra's bottom because I'm fascinated by the back ends of zebras when I go to Africa. And, uh, and there they are just sort of eating away in all this very dry grass. The cows again. Um, this calf had enormous ears, and I just wanted to paint this calf really. But then the calf and the cow happened, and then I wanted to do more detail in the, in the grass and the in the bushes, and I just wanted it. I don't know. I just wanted more colour in it, and I just wanted this calf to be in a really happy place, and the sky in the background with a bit of lilac and just very pale. Uh, that was my first go at watercolours, just the sky there. And uh, they sort of do their own thing, uh, you're not in control, so and that's fine too. Enjoyed painting that. This is experimenting with watercolour again. And uh, I just have so much fun with it and I just love the colours and I wanted to create something that wasn't really real but a bit real. So, um, and then by putting that big trunk of the tree on the left hand side and painting it like a berserk colour, so it's all like it's like two paintings in one. Um, it forms the the frame on the left hand side for it, and um, and it's it, it isn't flowing at all because that branch is coming out and it's very straight. Um, so it's uh, sort of pushing me because I like everything to flow and it doesn't. So I did it on purpose. And there's the fence at the bottom falling down, and a little bit of iron work in the grass right in the right hand corner down the bottom. I ate a fun unicorn for children for their bedroom 
But this one, when I started painting him, he was a bit arrogant and saying, what are you looking at? And uh, said he was spreading his magic around the earth and how dare I capture him doing so. So it's a, it's a bit of an attitude about this unicorn, which I liked. And um, he's, red, he's a red Palomino, also an Appaloosa. So I, I, I think I called him an, um, um, a Palaoosa. A, pala, a red palaoosa, there you go, I've invented a new word. Simplicity, and uh, there's nothing better than when I go away on holiday, just to sit near some water somewhere and just breathe in that sea air and just look out. Uh, quite simple, a bit of growth on the left hand side and two simple trees. But um, I wanted to do the colour and the texture, just playing again with that. This tree happened in um, Cumbria, in Mealsgate, uh, in the garage, because I know where to paint. And I, uh, I did it with my thumb. It didn't take long at all. I, did, I hated it at first, and everybody said, well, that's really nice. So I did the lines with my thumb first, and I, I slapped some paint between. And then I grabbed the purple and then drew this big tree. But actually now it reminds me of ley lines and uh, energy lines in the earth and the tree communicating. Because as you look at the tree, there's different birds and I'm sure that the birds communicate through each other, through the trees. Once here the baobab trees, which they say are the devil's trees that were planted upside down. And you see there's little pods hanging off them, which is the cream of tartar. That's where we get the cream of tartar from. Actually, baobab trees are not really trees. They are succulents, but they grow to enormous sizes. Absolutely huge. I just find them really fascinating. They're quite ugly, but they're fascinating. About water and plants and kingfishers and fish jumping out of the water and happiness and... Uh, I just, I just like the way it turned out. Uh, again, using watercolours and just them all blending into each other and not worrying about it. I think the effect uh, was quite good. And next to it, I think this would make some lovely curtains or some cushion covers. Uh, a, a summer's day for me. Lots of, um, I've used a bit of, I, I was given some rice and I didn't want to throw it away. So uh, it was dry rice, it wasn't cooked rice by the way, and it wasn't pilo rice either. It was uh, dried rice and I used that for the centres of the flowers and then painted all on the top of it. <laughs> okay, I was in America last year, I went to Yellowstone Park and as I'm in the back of the car being driven back, I could see the Indians just disappearing into the distance. And uh, I just wanted to capture that on canvas hopefully I've created some sort of atmosphere with it. Some point in your life there will come a time when you have to step up show the world and your surroundings who you really are Before at some point in your life you will ask yourself that mother of our questions Who am I?